I'm going to talk a little bit about the point here, right? Obviously, there's more than one little point on the arm, but up here, pretty much when you, you look at the structure of the two bands of muscles that are coming here, there's kind of a valley in between there, and there, there's a pretty good nerve location there. Again, the binary system of Q show, if the person feels pain, they move away fast. If they don't feel pain, they move away and usually yo-yo immediately back to resist the, the initial direction. So I'm not concerned at causing pain. A lot of people do feel pain in the dojo, but maybe with adrenaline or drugs, PCP, fentanyl, etc., your opponents, the type of people that are going to be attacking you, are not going to feel pain. But that's essentially the area that I'm going to be striking, and he does feel a little bit of pain there. Now I'm going to talk about some of the basic principles. So he's going to be left left uh, just initially. First things I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about, and you can practice without, I'm not causing any pain at all. I'm just pushing him at this point at that same spot. If I, if I hit this and nothing obstructs this arm, then his arm just goes away and I don't get very much kinetic load. What I want is kinetic load in that spot that I am striking. If I come up and hit this as hard as I can, nothing stops the arm. It's just going to go, and then he'll probably come back and do, you know, whatever. He'll, he'll, he'll be able to follow through. So one of the primary principles of Taika's Q show is to print, prevent escape. Taika would do that hand, finger, full forearm, all sorts of different ways. Uh, kind of cup motion as he did things but I want to strike and I don't want this to go away so that I get the most amount of physical penetration into the nerve group or groups as well as I, the kinetic load the kinetic energy is going in but it's going deeper and this isn't going away so I want to prevent escape and strike. Another thing I want to do is I want to choose my unsupported location, right? I want, I want to go where the leg is not supporting him. So very typical left, left, he stepped left, punched left. If I strike here with all my might, he sees motion and immediately everything on this side is set up to brace for that impact, right? That's bracing for impact is what he is going to naturally do. And you can see that if I go and, and punch him, he immediately, all his abs tighten up. If I go for his groin, <laughs> everything goes back. Your human nature allows you to brace for impact by the motion it sees. If you go towards the face, neck tightens up, etc. So when I go here, if I am just striking this, uh, he, he's, he's braced for that. He knows instinctively how to brace for that. So I either want to go to this point where there's no table leg or that point when I strike. So the moment I impact, I need to scoop forward or scoop back to those missing table legs. Now, forward motion. If this is coming forward and I strike and scoop forward, I'm adding kinetic energy to the punch. His brain is calculating where this is going in time and space and it knows what to tighten, when to tighten, what's, what's got to be loose, what's got to be tight, all those different things. By adding kinetic energy to it, facilitating, adding to, his brain has to recalculate, which takes away his ability to stay on his heels. 
it takes away his balance. If I, if it's going forward and I impact and reverse directions, very Nahanshi kind of motion, and go to that back table leg, his his brain is doing all this advanced math on what muscles have to loosen, what have to tighten, all these different things, and then suddenly there's a mid-air collision and I'm going back the opposite direction. So I'm depriving him of forward motion. If he punches and then I do the same strike on the rebound as he's pulling his arm back, I'm striking there. His kinetic motion is going back, I impact and go to the back table leg. That's facilitating. I'm going, I'm adding to facilitating. I'm helping him go back. That's facilitating. This time, Nahanchi inside strike would be the train wreck. As he's pulling back, I'm going that direction. I'm going the opposite direction. Train wreck to the front missing table leg. So those are kind of just some of the basic principles that are being accomplished there with the initial impact. There's obviously other things I can do. We do commonly do switch step, which puts, when I do switch step, it'll put all 150 pounds into this point instead of however many pounds my arm is. As I impact, all those different little principles are what I'm looking at. Not, I don't care about names of specific points. I don't care uh, meridian lines. I don't care about any of that stuff. All I want to do is prevent escape, go to one of the holes, either facilitating or deprivating, which helps take his balance and drop my weight into it. I can just buckle my knees and I get close to uh, the high end of my body weight or I can switch step and put in all of my body weight weight because I float rapid for impact. Timing wise, this prevent escape should be a split second before this impact on the nerve. The landing should be after it. So one, two, three. I should physically be, when I touch this, I should be somewhat airborne before this impacts. Very, very important. If in kata, Taiko would always say hands before the feet. If I, Taiko say you waste a step if you land and then punch, land and then punch. He very much didn't want that. He wanted here, airborne impact and drop. So that puts all 150 pounds into that. Another thing that I do is to help facilitate or deprivate. In addition to you know these standard motions, I'm also kind of curling that pinky because that's in this particular technique, I'm hitting the pinky knuckle into this as I'm hammering down and I can gather to facilitate or open to deprivate if the punch is coming forward. If it's going back, then it's open to facilitate and gather or close to deprivate. So those are our basic uh, tenets of basic core principles of how to apply the strike here. Now, again, I'm going to go into kind of demonstrating uh, some things that don't require pain to practice. So we've, I, I've done that and I've done this and uh, he's not so hypersensitive that that hurts, right? Another thing that this does other than prevent escape is it creates a pivot point. So I've created a pivot point. If I strike here and just by demonstration push, this pivot by pushing his elbow drops and his shoulder comes forward. So all of these things together all make this strike work the way it's supposed to work. I don't care if he feels pain or not, and as a demonstration of no pain, I'm gonna push, right? So I'm gonna do no push, and I get body reaction. 
That's what Tyco was looking for, body reaction, not pain compliance. If, if I hit that with everything I got and come in there, it's going to force a body change. The body change may get me to another target for another strike. It may get me into a tweete. He wanted to go from Kyusho making a body change with Kyusho into some sort of hold, some sort of lock to finish the, the technique. He didn't necessarily want to just get a blackout or a fuzz out. That was not, that sold tickets to the fancy show that made people go ooh, ah when he did the neck strikes and somebody fuzzed out, but that really wasn't the, the main part of the art. The Kyusho and Ateme, to a degree, would lead you to positions where you got into better tweete. So, with all that in mind, the timing of all of that is I want to be in that position and strike. Now, another thing that Taika would say, a fast, I'm going to do this kata motion or this kata motion, but I'm not aiming for that. I'm aiming for kata position. If he is a very slow puncher, then that kata motion may be up here more on the radial nerve and my, my strike may affect the nerve here. If he is an average puncher, my exact same motion is going to end up in this nerve here. If he's a little bit faster, I'm probably going to hit this with a little bit of forearm, but I'm still going to get this, all by being in that position. So it doesn't really matter which of these I go for. If I specifically aim for this, I'm going to be so focused on that that I'm probably going to get hit in the head. If, I, if my motion is this, and I get this, this, or this, I'm going to get a body change. I don't care if that particular body change ends the encounter. It would be nice if it ended the encounter. But if I get a body change from this, this, or this, that's going to help me proceed to another technique. If I get here, then it may end up with this technique. If I get here, it may end up with that technique. If I get here, it may end up with this one again or some other variation of it. It doesn't matter to me which one of those I hit. For class sake, I've got to pick a target and learn that target. Right? So we've got to work on our timing together. But in reality, all I'm trying to do is, is he's coming forward, is I'm trying to, to get a body shift out of him. And once I get that body shift out of him, he is now vulnerable to wrist lock, elbow lock, or shoulder lock.